Okay, the start of lesson four. Okay, um, <coughs> we will first talk about logarithm decrement um, in chapter three, which is the last part. And then we will start to talk about chapter four about force vibration. Chapter three, all along we are talking about um, free vibration. Okay, and then um, things that are so called free vibration consists of um, the things that are so called. Okay, so for example, hold on. The first free vibration was actually um there's an empty mass with a spring. When you pull this mass down and you release, assuming there is no resistance, uh, assuming there is no air resistance, okay, it will just keep oscillating and oscillating and oscillating until no end, right? So we have derived we we derive a lot of equations. The natural frequency, natural free, the uh, natural frequency, <laughs> yeah, natural frequency and such. And so, um, what is free vibration and what is damp free, free, damp free vibration is that free means that it let it oscillate and damp itself. Okay, so free itself it it just oscillate, but uh, nonetheless, um, if it's a damp free, then you have, okay, um, sorry, maybe perhaps I would say that free is actually let it oscillate. Okay, free is let it oscillate. Well, then free is actually um let oscillate and then itself. Okay, because you have a damper, you eventually you damp out and eventually come back to the to the equilibrium. So the difference is that free vibration, if you pull it down and then you release, you you will keep going and going. You will not you will not stop. You will not come back to this position and stop unless you have a damping system, thinking that it may be some air or perhaps you have a damper over here. So um, later we will talk about um, force vibration. Okay, then you will understand what. Nonetheless, uh, we should come back here again. So logarithm decrement is is related to this portion over here, free vibration and then free vibration. And the purpose of this is actually to find the damping factor of two amplitudes using using two amplitudes actually. Okay. So what does I what what do I mean about um, that? So as you can see, there is a one amplitude over here. Okay, maybe I should take hold on a while. Okay, so maybe we have an amplitude over here, and you have a second amplitude and another peak. Okay, we call it peak. First peak and second peak, and maybe third peak and fourth peak, right? So we we want to understand. Um, we can actually use this peak. Okay, to actually calculate the damping factor, because if you are to um, do an experiment. Okay, let's say if you put this mass over here, and then you 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 pull it down, and then you release. You you plot out the points. Okay, you plot the points, and then you draw your curve. You want to find because typically you want you would want to understand how does the damping factor, what is the damping factor itself for the system, right? So what do you do? Okay, so you actually take this peak, and then you you do some magic, and you eventually you get um a certain things. Out of this 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 information, so um, this is actually the um what I'm gonna talk about. So um, nonetheless, uh, yeah. So as I say earlier, um, we actually take the amplitudes of of the of the peak. Okay, different peaks, and then we use these peaks to actually calculate our domain factor. So eventually, our purpose, our objective is actually to um, derive an equation that can describe this phenomenon. So x is just is the position, okay? X in this case is is actually x, okay? It's the position x, okay? When you when you have um, you know, this is x, the distance, while this is the X position. Okay, this is the X position we are talking about. Okay, so all along we are plotting in terms of the X position. Okay, the distance itself, it's um you know just the distance itself, nothing much. So uh, nonetheless, let's come back to um here. So the equation. So let's use the equation to show you how how it is useful. Okay, so let's say you have this um X one. Okay. The amplitude is in terms of x1 over here, so it can be some equation, some polynomial or what. So x1 divided by xn plus one. Okay, which is which is in which is this 
which is this, okay? So let's say you you want n n is actually the number the number of um pick from the um the um original one. So let's say this is one. So n is actually one plus this one, right? So this is two two picks away from this one. So this is one pick away from this one. This is two picks. The pick is not this pick, but this pick. So it's, it's two picks from this one. So let's say if you have a the third pick. Okay, maybe it's over here. So this is the third pick from this one. So n is three. So n is used in this manner. So therefore n in this case, if let's say you want to find um two picks from this point, which is point three. So you just sub in two, and then eventually you just sub in two into some equation because they share the same equation, right? Because definitely they will share some, they will share the same equation. Okay, later you will talk about it. What is the equation? So nonetheless, if you sub in this, this, this um, um, you know, position three, or yeah, just sub in two and and because since it's two picks from the original one, so it's x one over x three is equals to e two damping factor. So you have this value, typically you have these two values. Okay, so solving for the main factor is pretty easy. So this is how we actually um use this equation. So and 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 the purpose is actually because when you do experiments, as I said earlier, you you plot out all this but you want to find out the dumping factor so you can actually see whether is it is a dumping factor good or not, because we don't want to have any resonance or what whatsoever. Or perhaps uh, we don't want under them or over them. Not, okay, so that the sound I say resonance. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. I shouldn't be saying that for free vibration. Free vibration do have um, you know, um, we didn't talk about resonance. So, and then um, we achieve it by we achieve this equation by measuring the rate of the decay. Okay, the rate of the decay, which is in terms of e, you know, and the number of peaks from your whatever your the point that you're measuring. And then um, multiply by the main factor. So um, so this is the meaning behind logarithm decrement. I think next video I'll just talk about how to derive that equation over here. Okay. But meanwhile, I'll just do up the introduction. So chapter four talk about force vibration, as as uh, later in the later video I'll talk about it. And then there we'll talk about the concept of definitions. And the main key points is to the purpose is actually to avoid resonance for force vibration. Okay, free vibration, um, because typically you, you damp, damp itself out, so there will be no resonance at all, perhaps some, if you are talking about complex systems, but let's talk about simple free vibration and, you know, simple force vibration system. So only simple force vibration has a void, has resonance, while the simple free vibration has typically not any resonance, we would say. I believe, okay, I think only. So, yeah, so far I didn't see any resonance in free vibration and then free vibration. Okay, which is so far I talked so many about free vibration and it's it's all about this one that I've been talking about. Okay. And then um the right equation that can predict resonance. So so in 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 this we in this lesson four we actually derived two two equations. The first one is actually um predict the resonance and, and stuff the phrase angle and some stuff like that, which is very complicated. While the while the other one we are, we are deriving the equation that we just saw you show you earlier, which is this one. So next video I'll just explain how we derive this one from the relationship of this one. So I'll see you in the next video.